Ooh, boy, I could talk about the first X-Men movie all day because this was a movie that I never thought would get made in my little kid brain because I'd read the comic books and I just thought there's no way that you could put this action on screen. I was excited to see what was gonna happen. Who's this guy playing Wolverine? Why isn't Mel Gibson doing it? That guy's too tall, he's Australian, this is bullshit. Then when I heard that the guy who did Usual Suspects is gonna make an X-Men movie, I went, give him all the money, please, because that sounds rad. And then that movie came out and it arguably launched what we are still experiencing today. People forget now because superhero genres are like the biggest thing going on right now. But at that time, there was a, ver a big lull in superhero films. 78 Superman, 89 Batman, but then we kind of lost the way again. In the mid 90s it got, not silly, but just it, didn't, it wasn't working. You didn't really have any superhero movies that were big in the public consciousness. And X-Men was the first one to come back and actually do that. It absolutely set us up for where we are now. It showed studios that this could be big money. It's not fringe uh, comic book nerds. So Blade was the movie that people were like, this just in, Blade's actually a comic book. And you're like, oh really? X-Men was clearly a comic book. But it was weird because they were like, we're not going to give you Yellow Spandex Wolverine. We need to disguise this as an action movie. Usually go outside in these things. What would you prefer? Yellow Spandex? With the casting of X-Men, obviously, you know, now we, we talk about Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. We can't imagine anyone else being Wolverine. But at the time that he was cast, people were yelling and screaming, oh, why? Hugh Jackman is Hugh Jackman now, but back then it was one of those, huh? This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Jackman absolutely owned that role, even though he's a foot too tall. I mean, that cage scene in the beginning. That's the Wolverine I've always wanted to see. This is awesome. Who is this Australian guy? He rocks. Yeah, I love, I love Wolverine in this movie. That's a scene where I went, that's Wolverine. That's Wolverine done right. I don't think anyone realized when they were watching the first X-Men movie that Hugh Jackman would be playing Wolverine for the rest of his life. Jackman as Wolverine is arguably the best cast superhero ever. Thank you. He is Logan. He looks like he's aging in reverse. He's got a full Benjamin Button thing going on. He looks way better now than he did in 2000. It's kind of incredible. Couldn't wait to get my shirt off again, huh? Fans of the comic know there are a lot of characters in the X-Men. We're not talking about Spider-Man as an origin story. We're talking about X-Men as an origin story. That's a juggling act that Brian Singer did very well. I mean, we're talking like Infinity War level of superheroes in this first movie. Cyclops, Jean Grey, Wolverine, uh, Ro all of them are in here. Iceman, they're all in here with Professor X, with Magneto. Professor X and Magneto are magnificent. Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart, two other people that just embody this role for so long. Professor X, Patrick Stewart, that was a really brilliant casting choice. It's funny because at the time, it seemed like they cast Picard as Professor X. Now, looking back on it, I would argue that Professor X is his career-defining role, not Picard. Patrick Stewart, there is no better choice to play Professor X because Patrick Stewart already came bald. I'm Charles Xavier. Would you like some breakfast? I don't care for X-Men. I appreciate that it was a shift in the superhero genre, but let me explain, you guys. I love the 93 animated X-Men series. And for me, that series hinged on two totally badass lady characters, Rogue and Storm. Were they in this movie? Sort of. The character of Rogue is supposed to be much older and in this particular version, she's a young girl, and that changes kind of her dynamic with the other characters. I cannot stand Teenage Rogue. I don't care about Teenage Rogue. Anna Paquin is whiny. She's annoying. None of what I liked about the animated series I felt like was in this movie. You should go. What's really interesting about X-Men, and this comes from the comics into the movie, is it's not just about human versus mutant. It's about sexism, racism, class warfare. It's this idea of the privileged over the underprivileged. The genesis of the X-Men is from that, this idea of feeling excluded because you're different. You're a mutant. 
The whole world out there is full of people that hate and fear you, and you're wasting your time trying to protect them. I mean, I think that all the X-Men movies ultimately become the same, more or less. It's Magneto thinks that the mutants are far superior and doesn't like the way they were treated in the past. Xavier and his brand are gonna try to save humanity. And that's really the story if you look at it. All the mutants are really fighting the same struggle. They're fighting against us. Are mutants dangerous? To all the mutants out there, thank you for defending us. I'm sorry our pea-sized brains cannot handle who you are. Maybe one day we can all live together. Mankind has evolved since then. Yes, into us. X-Men was a wildly important superhero movie because it bridges the gap between some of the cheesier, maybe less good stuff that we got in the 80s and the early 90s and what we think of as contemporary superhero storytelling. So what Brian Singer did for X-Men 17 years ago, and it's still here, that is something. X-Men blazed the trail for so many other movies. Spider-Man, the resurgence of the Batman franchise, and all the Marvel franchises, including the Avengers. If it wasn't for X-Men, I don't know if any of those things would have ever been greenlit. Along with Iron Man, this is one of the two foundations of why we have superhero movies. As far as a superhero movie goes, X-Men was the first one to me to make me think, we can do anything now. We can take anything that we see on a comic book and we can put it on the big screen and the audience is gonna buy in. That first X-Men movie was a game changer.